Hello and welcome to this two-part video series on determinants and of how to compute the determinants of matrices. Uh, but before we get into the computations, um, really quick, what is a determinant on like a high level? Uh, three blue, one brown does it better than anyone else could. He like animates it and stuff. But basically, what I learned from his video is that a determinant is the determinant of some standard matrix of a transformation. Say you have a, a matrix A, which is two by two. So it's going to transform the XY plane into something else, right? So if you have some circle in the XY plane before the transformation is applied to it, after the transformation, it's probably some squished oval or something. And the, the factor by which the area of that circle changes, or the factor by which any area changes, is a determinant of the standard matrix of that transformation. Okay, anyway, three blue, one brown does it way better. And uh, watch this video. But I'm going to teach you guys how to actually compute the determinants of matrices. And in this video, specifically, we're going to go over cofactor expansion. And then in the next video, we'll go over like how to row reduce and find it. Um, but really quick, we got some prerequisites. Um, just the notation. So you have a matrix A. And the determinant of A is written like this. Or you can write it like this, right? You can write these two vertical bars. And a two by two matrix, its determinant is very, very easy to calculate. And so if you don't know, then I'll just teach you really quick, but it's good. It, you have to know this uh, for cofactor expansion. So the determinant of some two by two matrix that has uh, entries A, B, C, D is, you can write it like this, right? With the vertical bars. And it's just equal to, you do the product along the main diagonal, and then you subtract from that the product along the other diagonal. So it's just equal to AD minus BC. Notice, this is just a number. So determinants are just numbers, right? They're not matrices anymore. The determinant of a matrix is just a scalar. Um, and then the last thing I want to say before we jump into cofactor expansion is that uh, you only take determinants of square matrices. Um, definitely for this class. I don't know what kind of spooky stuff, spooky like math that they'll do in higher level math. I don't know if determinants of non-square matrices actually exist, theoretically or whatever, but definitely for linear algebra, intro to linear algebra, you only do determinants of square matrices. Okay, so now let's jump into cofactor expansion. All it means is it's one method to compute the determinant of a matrix. And uh, so first, let me write down an example matrix. Okay, so we want to find the determinant of this 3x3 three three matrix using cofactor expansion. So to do this, we pick any row or any column to cofactor expand along. Okay, so this matrix, it's not adv advantageous to pick any particular row or column because there's no zeros anywhere. We're going to talk about this later. Um, so we just got to pick one at random. So let's pick the first row to cofactor expand along. So I don't know a better way to teach this than just to go through it, and then you'll learn as we go. Um, so basically, we've picked this first row to cofactor expand along. And so we're going to go through each element of the first row. So we start with this 1. So we say 1 times, the determinant of this whole thing is 1 times with the determinant of what's called a minor. And a minor is like a smaller matrix. So we're, we're working with this 1 here, right? So we're, let's just so just bear with me. So we cross out the first row and we cross out the first column. And what's left? We have this two by two matrix. This is called a minor. So we, we the determinant of this whole thing is one times the determinant of what's left when we cross out the row and column of the entry we're working with. So it's one times the determinant of five, six, negative two, negative three. So I'm just gonna write that. Five, six, negative two, negative three. Okay, and then we're cofactor expanding along the first row. So there's going to be three terms in this expression for the final determinant. The second term, now we're working with this two. So what do we do? We do, we do two. Uh, we cross out the row and column that we're working with, and then we multiply by the determinant of what's left, which is four, six, um, four, six, one, negative three. So two times four, six, one, negative three. Really quick though, the signs alternate as you cofactor expand. So how do you know what sign it is? There's like a pattern that you can memorize. So you always will have, if you have some matrix, 
you'll uh, it'll like this three by three matrix. This the pattern is plus minus plus minus plus minus plus. It's like a checkerboard of pluses and minuses. What does this mean? It's the sign of the of the term that you're working with. So like here, this one is a plus. So this is a positive one. But over here, we're out, we're working with this two. We're working with this entry up here. That's a minus according to this pattern. So this has to be minus two times the determinant of the minor. Okay, okay, we're making we're making moves. Now the now we're cofactor spanning along the first row. So our last term we work with this three. We cross out the row and column that the three is in, and we do three. But wait, is it positive or negative? Uh, it's positive according to this pattern, right? So plus three times the determinant of what's left after we cross out the row and column. So that's four, five, one, negative two. 4, 5, 1, negative 2. Okay, so now we just simplify. And this is why I said that you have to know the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix for cofactor expansions because it's always going to boil down to uh, an expression with terms that include 2 by 2 determinants. We know how to do those. So this is just 1 times the determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix is 5 times negative 3 minus 6 times negative 2. So 5 times negative 3 is negative 15 minus negative 12, so plus 12. Okay, then we'll simplify this term. We have minus 2 times negative 12 minus 6. And then here we have plus 3 times this determinant, which is negative 8 minus 5. And now we just keep simplifying. So I'll come back with the answer. Okay, so then we end up getting negative 6 as our answer for the determinant of this 3 by 3 matrix. So now I want to cofactor expand along a different row or column just to prove to you that it makes the same it, or it works the same. You'll get the same answer, negative six, and also we'll get more practice of like figuring out which uh, which term is positive or negative. So let me recopy this uh, matrix up here, and then we'll cofactor expand along I don't know the third column because it doesn't matter. All right, so let's cofactor expand along this third column because it doesn't matter which row or column we pick. So the determinant of this big 3 by 3 is equal to this expression. We're starting here at 3 and we're going down the third column. So it's 3 times, wait a minute, is this 3 positive or negative? Well, it, the pattern goes plus, minus, plus. So it's positive. Another way to think about it is, uh, and this like comes up in those really complicated looking formulas for cofactor expansion. This 3 is in the first row in the third column. Okay, so you just go 1 plus 3 is 4. And then negative 1 to the 4th power is negative 1 to an even number, so it's positive 1. So this uh, term here is multiplied by a positive 1. That's where that formula like negative 1 to the i plus j or negative 1 to the m plus n or something comes from. Um, or if it's easier, you can just go by this pattern. It's like a checkered board of pluses and minuses, starting with a plus in the top left corner. So, okay, continuing along, we have 3 times the determinant of... What is this minor? Well, we cross out the first row, third column, and we're left with 4, 5, 1, negative 2. 4, 5, 1, negative 2. And then we go down this third column, right? So now we do plus 6. Or wait a minute, is it plus? No, it's not, right? It's minus, because the pattern goes plus, minus, plus, minus. Or you could say 6 is in the second row, third column. 2 plus 3 is 5. Negative 1 to the negative, sorry, negative 1 to the fifth is negative. So then this term has to be negative. So negative 6 times the determinant of the minor. When you cross out the second row, third column, you get 1, 2, 1, negative 2. And then now we go, we're continuing down along the third row. So now we do negative 3. Okay, this is interesting. It's a negative 3, but the pattern says it should be plus. So that's okay. You just copy down the entry here, and then you multiply it either by a positive one or negative one, depending on what the pattern tells you to. So this is plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. So we do a positive one times whatever this entry is, which is negative three. So it's still going to be a negative term, but that's just because the entry is negative. Times the determinant of one, two, four, five, right? One, two, four, five. So now we continue three times negative eight, Minus 5 is negative 13. Minus 6 times negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. 
minus 3 times 5 minus 8 is negative 3. And then we simplify negative 39 plus 24 plus 9 is negative 6. I didn't do that in my head that fast. I'm just, I just know that that's the answer. Okay. Is that the answer? Yeah, it is. Okay. Anyway, negative 39 plus, okay, good. I got confused. So, so the point is, it doesn't matter which row or column you pick, you cofactor expand, you get the right answer. So now I'm going to pause it and come back with this huge intimidating looking matrix, but we're going to be clever. And then using cofactor expansion, it's not that hard to find the determinant of this big matrix. So I'll be right back. We need to find the determinant of this four by four matrix. And you're like, oh my God, that looks like a disaster. Uh, it would be, but we have cofactor expansion and we look and we see, wow, look at these, look at the, this row and look at this column. We got all zeros except for one entry. And so if we're clever, if we cofactor expand along, say this third column, then remember we go, we, each term is multiplied by the element in that row or column that we're expanding upon. And so if we have you know, three of those four terms have a zero in it, then that term, that whole term just goes away. So let's try that. Let's cofactor expand along this third column. And I'll show you that it really does simplify everything. So this is equal to, we're going along this third column. We start off with zero times the determinant of, we cross out this row and column, zero times the determinant of negative one, two, five, negative two, blah, 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 blah. But it's zero times that determinant, so the term just goes away completely. The only term that will survive the cofactor expansion will be the term that has this two in it, right? So we're gonna have two times the determinant of a three by three matrix, but really quick, is this two plus or minus, right? Well, let's follow the pattern, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, so it's positive. Or you could say third row, this two is in the third row and third column, mm -hmm. three plus three is six, and negative one to six power is positive one. So this term is positive, so two times the determinant of we cross out the column that it's in and the row that it's in. We're left with this three by three minor, which is negative one, two, five, zero, one, zero, one, negative three, five. And we do and then how do we find the determinant of this three by three? Using cofactor expansion again. So you can see that this is a recursive method, and, and you keep applying cofactor expansion to all these minors until you get down to two by two matrices which you know how to compute the determinant of in a very simple way. So since it's recursive, you can imagine this would be pretty uh, easy to program in a computer if that's what you're into. But anyway, we keep going. So now we cofactor expand this matrix. Which row or column do we want to pick? Because there's zeros here, there is like a better answer. There is a more advantageous row or column to pick. We want to pick this second row because there's a bunch of zeros in it. Because the only term that would survive the cofactor expansion would be the term that has this one in it. So let's do that. So the determinant of this whole thing is two times the determinant of this three by three, which is two times, um, this is just a bracket, not a matrix. Two times, we're gonna cofactor expand along the second row. The only term that'll survive is this one. Is it positive or negative? Well, plus minus plus. So it's positive one times the determinant of this minor. We cross out the row and column the ones in. Right, we picked this one and we cross out the row and column it's in and we get negative one five one five right and this whole thing is multiplied by one which is multiplied by two so keep track of your work so then we continue and we say the whole determinant is two times one times this two by two determinant which is uh, negative five minus five times negative five minus five which equals two times one times negative 10, which equals negative 20. That was not so bad, wasn't it? Because, I mean, you look at this four by four, you're so intimidated, but it really just boils down to this cofactor expansion, which turns out to be really easy because of all the zeros we had. So that's the benefit of cofactor expansions. It's very simple if you have any rows or columns in your big matrix that have a lot of zeros. And so we, we did this whole process. We get the determinant of this 4x4 four four matrix to be negative 20. Okay, I hope that helps. I hope you get a better understanding of the cofactor expansion. And you're not intimidated by those like crazy looking formulas. It really does just, it's a very simple process that you follow. So I'll see you in the next video where we talk about how to find the determinant of a matrix using row reduction.